for an identity. I was looking to be part of something. In each and every one of our lives, we're always looking to be part of someone or some group or some gang. Amen? But unfortunately for me, I was looking for God. Strange. <laughs> I was looking for God. I knew something was a little different in my life. I knew I was a little different person because I'm awesome, a little boy. I always looking into the heavens and I noticed something out there, but I did not know what it was. So my entire life was, prior to, to me coming to Christ, I was living a sinful life. I was living a sinful life. And through that, I became a Rastafari. Amen? Amen. You are dealing now with an ex-Rastafari, which means that I was practicing the things that the worship of Haile Selassie. And it, it, something I was thought it would have helped me in finding who God was, or who God was, what, what God was about. Amen? So we're going to find out my little life story. <laughs> it is not nice, but it is my life story. The giants of hate and division. The horns of hell, the worship of, of false Christ. Somebody said false Christ. False Christ. False Christ. False Christ. See, it's strange when it's already written in the scripture what people are going, going to do. Even Jesus said it. And people still follow false Christ. Belief is very powerful. If a person begins to believe something, and take it to heart, they really believe that that is the truth. Right. And it could be a lie. Yes, sir. But see, our Lord Jesus Christ, he wrote it down already for us. He let us know that what we're going to be facing is going to be false Christ. So is it false? False. false. Fake. 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 Christ. 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 Amen. Amen. Now let's deal with the giants of hate and division. Come on, my brother. The giants of hate and division, cutting the head off the principalities of hate and division. Uh -huh. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12. Uh -huh. For we wrestle. Say, say like you have some meaning in there, my brother. Ephesians 6, yes, sir. chapter 12. Yes. And it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against who? Flesh and blood. That means my discussion today or my, my preaching today is not against man or woman, it's against a spirit. Amen. Amen. So I want, to, I want to keep that in focus. Come on. But against principalities. Against principality, principal spirit, ruling spirits. Against powers. Powers, the spirit that's above, that's governing with authority. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The rulers of the darkness of what, which world? This, this world. world. So, folks, you're a demon in your territory. Come on. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. That means you got people sitting right now in places that is high. That's all I want to say. <laughs> okay? And they are exercising wicked ideas. Amen. That's all I'm going to say. If you get my drift. In the name of Jesus. Come on, my brother. The worship of false Christ and prophets. Uh-huh. This teaching will expose in depth the beginning of black liberalism. The beginning of a what? Black liberalism. Which means black liberalism that operate under unforgiveness. Black liberalism operate under unforgiveness. They are not there for the black men or the white men or the green men. They are for themselves. If you keep me under that state of mind of unforgiveness, I mean I'm going to keep hating my brothers and sisters. You see, I see they gotta keep you that way. Because if they teach you how to love, teach you how to forget, then they lose their power. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Spiritual wickedness oh my God. that keep you in hate. Don't talk about unity if you keep me in hate. Amen. Amen. You're sending a false message. Oh see, hate pays the bill. Love them. See, because if I teach you to love others, how could I make money off your hate? Amen. Um, See, men always want to be in power. Yes, sir. Want yes. to be a Christ in your life. Yes. Always want to rule your life by their ideology. Mm -hmm. 
They want to be Messiah. But yet they won't take the cross. Mm. Jesus went on the cross. But none of these. I almost said the wrong word. Yeah. Let me behave myself. Let me be nice. There are men among us. <laughs> and women among us. When they will not. Uh, take the position. Like Jesus did. And go on the cross. And be crucified. Yeah. See they want to reign without crucifixion. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. Somebody said Jesus is good. Jesus is good. I operate under the spirit of unforgiveness in the spirit of hatred, intense dislike. We should never be teaching people how to hate. Yes, sir. It's easy to teach hate. It's hard to teach love. That's what the Lord taught me a long time ago. He says hard, son. Why? Because there's no, you don't know what the benefit of of the love going to bring, you know. If I love you, how that going to work out? Mm -hmm. Amen? But if I hate you, I know I can keep that thing going. Mm -hmm. But loving you is like, it, it, the, fight, it, the fight is over. Mm -hmm. Now I got to agree. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I got to surrender. I got to agree. I can't, I, well, I don't like you anymore. At least that keep me in my mind. In, you know, in your mind, you be thinking, oh, I don't like her. Mm -hmm. Or you don't say, I love, I, I, I'm going to love her. See, love is the gift of God. So when you love somebody that hates you, you gave them a gift. They could still, they could still keep hating you, but that's okay. You are blessed because you are given the gift of love. God is hated, but he yet still died. And said, Father, forgive them, but they know what they do. So love displayed greatly to the place where the centurion said, this surely is the son of God. Because he understood clearly that I can a man suffer as Christ suffered and yet forgive. Yeah, okay. Amen? So if, that's, if Christ could do that and they want to be a Christ, then they need to forgive just like Christ did. Amen. But they will not. Why? Because they are driven by dark spirit that you cannot see. Amen? Amen? Come on, my brother. This teaching will also expose in depth the beginning of black deception through the Rastafari belief in the 1930s. You see, when the black, when, when, when the black people was in, in, in suffering and needing an identity, this is where the devil brings about false Christ. In, their, in our ethnic culture, he brought false Christ to teach us that we can be free from this uh, uh, grip of the white man, as that's what was saying. But the problem, this is the problem. It wasn't the white man that sold us. It was our own people. Jesus. Don't blame them for you selling me. Let's tell the story straight. All right? Everybody's guilty in this. Everybody got their hands in this. I'm breaking up the spirit of hate and removing the deception of ignorance. Because we all got to, you, know, you know, like you said, you know, we, 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 we let, you need to pay us back for, 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 for working on the plantation. Then ask the Negroes who sold us to pay us back as well. Amen. Amen. I didn't actually be sold. Amen. You took me from my family Amen. and sold me to the European. You did that. My own culture did that. Oh Let's speak that story, that history. True. That's the truth. Tell the complete truth. Stop blaming people. You know those black folks always blame people? Yes. <laughs> now you know where they got it from. Yes, sir. I'm being honest. Now you know where they got it from. Yes, sir. Always blaming somebody for their dilemma. Yes, sir, Pastor. Always blaming somebody while they're poor. <laughs> you poor because you don't want to work. Oh, that's good, right? I understand this opportunity that can be robbed from you. I get it. But you keep on going. Amen. Until you find the right opportunity. Yeah. But you're poor because of you don't want to work. Just point blank. Amen. You want somebody to take care of you. Amen. Looking for a handout. Amen? Amen. My God, that I serve is colorless. So I can speak to what I'm speaking. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. When he had me that cross, he thought about me. He didn't talk about my ethnicity. He didn't talk about my color. He talked about my heart. Yes, How badly I needed him. Jesus. If we're going to bridge 
we're going to make a bridge of reconciliation. Let's be honest and bring every guilty party to the table. Amen. Not just one particular set. Bring everybody. And I guarantee they won't do that. That definitely ain't going to happen. But you want unity. Unity without truth, there is no unity. All it is is a disgrace. <laughs> well, wasting your time, wasting your time sitting in, in some kind of board meeting you call the board meeting, just boring and make, wasting wasting time because in your heart is still wicked. Oh my God. Wow. So don't come tell me about no unity. Wow. First, let's let's sit around the table and repent. Amen. And call on Jesus. Amen. Keep reading, my brother. The teaching will also expose in depth the Rastafari's origin through the coronation of Selassie as emperor of Ethiopia in 1930. Hallelujah. Woo! So was it Jesus? Jesus. Look, look, look at what you're looking at. When the Lord showed this to me, he said, he said, go back and look again when I was when I, when I was doing my, 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 my studies. And Selassie started 1930. Then I went back and I said, wait a minute. He said, the nation of Islam started in 1930 as well. Two black movement started in 1930. That's strange. That's a strange thing. The problem is, one started by black men and another one started by white men. Hey. Yeah, they, they, they said that he got black blood. No, he, he's white. <laughs> don't sell me on you got no black blood. No, don't try to sell this stuff to me. Just be honest, he's white. Let's be honest. The nation of Islam started by a white man. I named him Master Ford at the time. Then he changed his name to Master Far. That's the that is that is that is that is history. Amen? Amen. So let's be honest. Don't tell me <laughs> you put a black man when the white man started your organization. Let's be honest. Don't call the white man devil when you have a devil starting you. Mm. If you want to be honest. Because you call him my president devil as well. Amen. Amen? Amen. And I ain't going to go for that. Amen. Let's be honest. Amen. If you want to be real, let's be real. Amen. Come on. Why be, be, she, you see how people get scared and quiet? I'm not scared and quiet. I'm going to tell you the truth. It's there. You can't fool me. I'm an ex safari What else can you tell me? What can you tell me? I know Ali Selassie is black. And I know Master Four is white. I'm not blind. You know, I'm a black blood in them. Anybody got black blood in them, they did. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't sell me no foolishness. They did. <laughs> Just be honest. I mean, be honest. Stop telling stories. Stop telling fables. Just be honest. What are we scared? You know why? And I always said this, and the Lord let me know. Truth is protected by bodyguards of lies. Oh my yeah. God. Yes. Because if you know the truth, you'll be free. Yes, sir. Amen. For my grip. Spiritual wickedness. That's what we're dealing with, right? Yeah. Not flesh and blood. We're dealing with spiritual system. Mm -hmm. Amen. That trying to, 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 to bind the black and the white to hate each other. When Jesus died, he unified man. He didn't die to, to separate man. Amen? I'm just being honest with you. When he died, he didn't die just for the Jews. He didn't die just for the blacks. He didn't die just for the white. Because, you know, some people believe that Jesus is black. So I got to make that. I got to cover all the avenues. See? He didn't die for the blacks. He didn't die for the yellow. He didn't die for the Korean, the Chinese. He died for humanity. Yeah. Humanity needed a savior, and he provided that savior a, 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 a position, a, a, a life for them. Amen? Amen? They needed a savior. And the father needed his son to die for the children Amen. that he created. Yes, Amen? Amen? So when Jesus died, his blood was red, it wasn't black. Amen. You get it? Amen. Red is the color of love. He bled with love in his heart. Not hatred in his soul. So 
So how we get this division? This division come about because of the devil. Satan brought this division to offset the union and the fellowship. See, the strange thing about it, in the Tower of Babel, they was all in one accord. Yeah. Satan didn't have no problem with that. <laughs> but he had a problem with this, so we come together. Yes, Why you don't stop that? Uh, why you didn't stop the Tower of Babel? No, because what they were doing is something wicked. wicked. Yeah. <clears throat> That's right. But coming together with black and white, yellow and green in true relationship with Jesus Christ is dangerous to him yes. because he you knows that brings the glory of the Father and he knows what that glory will do to his agenda. Amen. That's why the spirit of wickedness will keep on doing what he's doing, bringing the division, bringing us apart. Why? Because of his control. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ruling darkness of the spirit of concealment and deception. My God, my God, my God. Come on, read my brother. Matthew chapter 24, verses 1 through 5 says, uh -huh. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to shew him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another, that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming? He said, Tell us what is going to happen, right? Come on. And of the end of the world. At the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is Jesus talking, right? Amen. I'm making sure. Jesus talking. Not Paul. No. Nah. It's Jesus talking. Come Amen. On. He said, Take heed. Take what? Take heed. Take heed. That no man deceive you. Take, say that again. Take what? Take heed. That no man deceive you. Did he say let man deceive you? No. No. Maybe? No. no. Probably. No. no. No is a definite article, right? Absolutely. That means no. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen? Amen? No one deceive you. So how in this world, I am extra safari, Prior to becoming a Christian, I was following a man. It's because I had ignorance in my mind. I did not know the Bible. I did not know anything. So anything that was saying to me sounded good. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Sounded pleasing. Mm -hmm. See, when the Antichrist comes, he's not going to come and say I'm Antichrist. Mm -hmm. Or against Christ, or instead of Christ. That's what I mean. So he said, I'm coming in the place of Christ. <clears throat> So when you come in the place of Christ, which means you come as the Messiah anointed one, one sent by God. So his words are going to be tainted with a lot of lies and deception, partly truth, which means that he's acting as the devil's emissary. Unknown to you. But see, in my mind, in your mind, we are starving for identity. We are starting to be part of something. Yes. We want to be part of some type of community. We want to be part of something. So the light was easier to uh, sink into our hearts because we already were looking for something. Yes. See, and the Lord showed me that ignorance will leave a, 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 a vacuum. So it needs to be filled by something. So if you are ignorant, you, there's a vacuum there. Uh-huh. You didn't know that. Uh-huh. Ignorant means you don't know. So somebody going to teach you something you don't know. And you're going to believe it because it's going to make sense. They're going to couple it with what is going on today, what's going on in your life, and mix it with false ideology. How will you know the difference? The devil ain't going to come and say, I'm the devil. There's no way he's going to tell you that you're going to run. That's why he said, are you going to transform yourself as an angel of light? False light. False ideology. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. For many shall come in my name. Many. Saying. Did he say one? Nah. He said how much? Many. That means throughout the generation, they're going to be what? Many people. Going to come in whose name? In the name of Christ. Now this is when it becomes dangerous. <laughs> when they come in the name of Christ. What are we supposed to do? We supposed to reject them. But we don't. You know why? Like I go back and said earlier, we are starved for it to be part of something. You know, some of us come from broken homes, 
you know, come from family, come from friends, come from areas in our lives that was problematic, situational. Amen? Amen. And what happened? This is what happened when we come from those areas. We need something to fill that void. Yes. So these false cries will come in and fill that void. That's what it felt in my life when I was a Rastafari. I did not know better. I, all I knew was that, you know, what they were saying was right to me. Amen. And I come in from a place where I studied a lot of things. So when they were speaking to me, it felt good, you know, it felt real good. It's a Rastafari, boy, you, 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 you grow your dread, you grow your locks there, you know, and you, <laughs> let me get started. <laughs> anyway, you see, I grab my head. I don't got no hair. <laughs> in, in their view, I'm a bald head. <laughs> they say, Your bald head, dread. I say, Yeah, I know, but my dread in the heart, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, keep, keep reading. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Uh -huh. The name Christ means the Messiah and the Anointed One. Uh -huh. Christ. The anointed, consecrated, redeemer, prophet, priest, and king are all synonyms. They're all what? Synonyms. Mm -hmm. So they, what are they claiming to be? Prophet? Redeemer? Anointed, redeemer? Right. So when they come in that name, what are they claiming to be? Prophet? Anointed. Right? Mm -hmm. Redeemer? Mm -hmm. Right? Priest? Yep. And king? Mm -hmm. king. We're going to meet a king right now. Amen. And he claiming to be king. Mm -hmm. And he claimed the glory of God for he said... And it's last claim that he is King of King and Lord of Lord. He is the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Trinity. That's what he claimed out of his own mouth. Boy. But that's okay. The Trinity is gone. <laughs> you can't claim that and, 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 and be dead. Mm. Oh, Jesus is still living. Amen. Still alive. And this is this the trick. See, if they took time to read the scripture, when it said kings of kings and lord of lord, what is, you know what he's saying? If you read the scripture, the Bible said that we shall cast our crown to his feet. Who is the king of kings? They're the redeemer of the lord. You ain't talking about earthly king. Is there any earthly king now? Nope. So you're not talking about earthly king. He's talking about kings who God would accept. Remember Paul said, I got a, I got a crown waiting for me. Yes, sir. Wow. And not only for me, but for you as well, if you remain in Christ. He said, we got a crown. And he said, we shall cast our crown to his feet. Hallelujah. And bow down to the king of kings. To the Lord of lords. For we're going to be ruling in heaven with him. Lord of lords, conquering line from the tribe of Judah. That's what he claimed to be. From the tribe of praise. He's dead now. <laughs> he ain't praising nobody. He's begging for water. Amen. When you claim that type of claim, that's blasphemous to the Holy Ghost. You in hell. And I know they don't like to hear that word. You know, be nice, you know. You can't say the man is in hell. He's in hell. <laughs> uh, listen, that's what Jesus said. Amen. Now I'm wrong now. People are going to be writing and say, oh man, how can you say that? He's in hell. Re the reality. Just, just listen. Settle down. Sit down. Relax. There is a real hell. And if you claim that claim, you're going there. Agree for me, my brother. Abraham mm -hmm. Selassie was born to worship a man, right? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Abraham mm -hmm. Selassie was born Rastafari, Mackinon, on July 23rd, 1892, August 27, 1975. He was the emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 to 1975. Amen? Amen. He was worshipped as a Messiah. Wow. Rastafari, when man is worshipped, they rob God of his glory. When man Assume worship from people. They're, rob, they're robbing God of his glory. And God said, I will not share my glory with no man. Or no one. Only with his son. His name is Jesus. Amen? Amen. 
He believed he was directed descendant of King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. According to the oral tradition, say oral, oral. that don't mean it's real. You know, gossips, you know, you know, anyway. Oral tradition, the Queen of Sheba and Solomon was sexually involved. That's a lie. You want to tell me because, because this queen wants to come to hear Solomon's great wisdom, that means she had to sleep with him? That's assuming. Why, why does she have to sleep with him just to inquire of his wisdom? She could be a dignified person. She may not want to do that. Amen. She's a married woman. She, there's a, is a queen, there's a king. She may be faithful to her husband. Yeah. Why are you going to assume that just for you to form a religion, to, to put him in a lineage, in, in, in the line of their union? No, nah, there was no union. And you're going to see right now there was no union. Keep reading, my brother. According to the oral tradition of the queen and she, uh, uh, excuse me, according to the oral tradition of the queen of Sheba and Solomon were sexually involved, as you already read. Uh -huh. The worship of man through cunning fables. First Timothy chapter one, verses one through seven says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the, com by the commandment of God, our savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, Unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Teach no what? No other doctrine. Okay. Neither give heed to fables uh -huh. and endless genealogies uh -huh. which minister questions uh -huh. rather than godly edifying which is in faith. Uh -huh. So do. Uh -huh. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart uh -huh. and of a good conscience uh -huh. and of faith unfeemed. Uh -huh. From which some have... Which means sincere. Right. From which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. They, they, they did what? They, they turned to listen to what? Vain jangling. Ah, you see now, you see the, you see the devil's stroke? Come on. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, uh -huh. nor whereof they affirm. Uh -huh. Now, you see that endless genealogy? Mm -hmm. We're going to be dealing with a lot of that. Be, be, see, Not, not because he was born black or born white. You ain't no different from a black person to a white person. The problem I learned when I was learning Rastafari is that my heart was wicked. I may have a, a, a form of godliness, but I denied the power mm -hmm. of transformation. I did not know my heart was wicked. Okay? It's not, it's not the color. And the Lord showed me this. It's not the color, son. It is the heart. It is the heart. Because I guarantee if I put you on a stretcher and I cover you up and all I do is do a surgery in the section of your heart, nobody will know who that person is underneath that cover. Amen? Amen. And as soon as you cut it open, you're going to see a heart. Right? It's going to be probably, you know, whatever color is a heart is. And when you look at it, until they tell you it's a black person, it is a white person, it is a yellow person, or a green person. You ain't gonna know. Color, color determine who you are as far as color, right? But your heart determine who you are character-wise. Yeah. I cannot change my color, mm -hmm. but I can change my heart. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen? My heart is to be changed mm -hmm. and need to be changed for me to love another person who have a different color. You have to be changed, right? Because that's where prejudice lies. It's in the heart. Yes, sir. It's not in the color. It's in the heart. It's in the heart. Okay? And, and the sad thing about it, even black prejudice against blacks. Yes. So how you feel that one? Yeah. How you figure that one out? Yeah. Black on black crime. Yes. It, it, but it's the heart. It's nothing to do with your color. It's your heart. Forget the color. The color is garbage. That's why he said, he does it, can an Ethiopian change his color? No. But he could change his heart. Which means... I was born this way, black, but my heart 
was not born to be bright. My heart was born to love God. Amen. Amen. When he gave me my heart, it was for me to love God. Yes. Right? And that's what he did. He said, he said Samuel, I see the heart. I don't look at the man's statue yeah. or his color. I see the heart. The heart. God is good. All the time. And next week, we're going to be dealing with the, let me tell you what we're doing next week. The Queen of Sheba and Solomon. We're going to be dealing with that union. Amen? Amen. We're going to be dealing with that union. We need to look into that. God is good. 